Hello everybody and welcome to another weekly update. My name is Martin, I'm an Inkscape developer developing features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Except uh, this week I am not developing features and fi fixes, I am developing uh, security maintenance and uh, that's the topic of this week's video is the time that I have spent this week on fixing a critical uh, security vulnerability in Inkscape. Now um, up front the security vulnerability isn't uh, critical. Um, did I say it was critical? What I mean by that is it's not uh, severe. Um, it is it's a security vulnerability reported to us by a security researcher, and um, I have managed to fix it. But uh, I did want to go into the history of um, this particular security vulnerability, and um, you know, pick apart the reasons why a program like Inkscape would be vulnerable. And um, before we get into that, uh, let's start off with a big th thank you to all of the sp sponsors who every single, single week um, allow me to spend time on Inkscape, whether it's developing fancy fe features for the front end or whether it is uh, doing what I did this, this week, which is basically diving into a security nightmare. Um, okay, so. When I first uh, started off with Inkscape, um, the programming that I used to do was extensions. I used to write Python code. Um, one of the first uh, contributions that I made to the pro project that was actually C++ was uh, fixing a compatibility problem that had arisen because of a certain well-used vector editing program produced files that were fundamentally incompatible with security. Okay, what does all that mean? Way back when, uh, people created a format called XML. Um, XML is a way in which you can represent data in a systematic, structured way. It contains certain features. It was discovered in uh, the 2010s or thereabouts that all XML files and all XML programs, if they were compliant, had a giant planet-sized security problem that basically allowed an attacker to read arbitrary files from your disk and send them to the internet. Uh, you didn't need to have JavaScript. You didn't need to have, uh, like, to actually execute code um, inside the vulnerability. You could just execute this vulnerability by having a document, whether it was a Microsoft Word document whether it was a Firefox XHTML document, or in fact, whether it was a SVG XML, of course. So uh, quite rightly, the, the uh, programming community in general decided to destroy this fe feature and it's no longer supported in XML. It's called XML Document Entities. Um, they have been removed from most XML implementations. And now if you use them, uh, you have to essentially tell the XML parser that you are you want to do something dangerous. So obviously Inkscape followed this. We do not allow entities. Except um, Adobe Illustrator uh, SVG export pl plugin produces SVG or used to produce, I, I might say. I don't actually know if it still does. It produces SVG that uses entities not for something spurious, not for something that doesn't matter, but for the definition of its namespaces. It uses entities for its namespaces, right? Is that you, Adobe? Can I have a quick word? Just come here, come here, come here for a second. What is this? No, excuse me. What is this? Look, I get it. SVG is not your native format. But this is unacceptable, right? This is standard XML representation, standard XML interoperability, right? It's not a fruit salad arrangement course. This is standard stuff, right? If this is the quality of the XML representation that you're capable of producing, then God only knows what the PDF customizations that you have in your natural vector form format look like. I mean... Holy hell, this isn't just bad, it is terrible. It is arguably deliberate, right? The only reason why you would do something this goddamn awful to this poor XML file that didn't deserve it 
is because you wanted to deliberately make it harder to open up these files in other programs, right? Which to my mind is just unacceptable. Now, go back, try again, and I do not expect to see something this goddamn awful again. Okay, so here's the problem, right? Um, we want to be able to support SVG files. And uh, Inkscape isn't the only pro program that has to support SVG files that have these kinds of problems in them. Uh, and so uh, back in the day, I developed a fix that basically allowed Inkscape to be able to continue to open these Adobe files um, by detecting that they were broken in this particular way and trying to strip out the security sens sensitive parts to, to them and then uh, running with the uh, the remaining non-security problematic entities. Um, this fix, though, still uses entities, right? And it's still problematic. So um, this fix this week is actually removing all of that. That's all gone. We don't do that anymore. I have a better fix, uh, which is more complete. I obviously, for reasons of disclosure, won't go into the exact report that caused me to uh, revisit this particular problem. It's been many years since I fixed the original problem. Um, but now, hopefully, uh, you will be able to open up one of these Adobe SVG files um, without causing an exploit. Uh, you'll also be able to open damaged SVG files that have bad namespaces. Um, and hopefully Inkscape will be a little bit more robust when it comes to both its security and also uh, being able to detect that it's an SVG file, but just wrong. Um, I know I, I can't go into a lot of details for, on this report, so thank you for bearing with me. Um, but know that uh, it has been quite an adventure. Uh, one of the things that I discovered was that other SVG uh, editors and the XML library itself have massive hacks carved into them. So the library libRSVG uses an XML hack to support these same files. And uh, part of the thing that makes that makes this amusing is that I just love the idea of libxml2, which is like a standard-based library used in so many like products and space probes and goodness knows what else. Like even your microwave might have a copy of libxml2 in it. Has code in it to work around Adobe SVG files, right? That's that's how mad the world is. Is like if you create a file format that is this terrible, you could end up causing knock-on effects in industries that you have no business in, um, such as the way of open source code. Okay, um, let's get into some news from the rest of Inkscape. This is uh, work on things that uh, I didn't do myself, but it's worth. Uh, promoting because there's an awful lot of great contribution going on in Inkscape. Uh, firstly, a big shout out to uh, PBS, uh, Mykov, uh, Adam, and um, for, for all of the work on patterns. If you have seen their tweets asking about what patterns to include, this is basically a combination of Adam, who's a designer, Mykov, who's like a designer slash uh, programmer, and PBS, who's like a back-end programmer. Um, collaborating to produce a uh, pattern editor. Um, many, many fixes to the patterns, how they're rendered, how they are um, sequenced, and also improvements to the design, uh, the user experience in general. It all looks amazing. I can't wait for pe people to start rigorously testing it uh, in the betas next year. Uh, but you can obviously get your hands on the masters anytime you like to, to give them a try. Um, my work on editing patterns goes into that, like, cause you can edit them on the canvas now. Um, Mike, I've also did some work on the color palettes. Uh, this basically allows certain colors to be sticky so that even if you scroll around, those colors will stick. Uh, this actually came from a YouTube, uh, not YouTube, Twitter comment that I found and I passed along to Mykov since he did the original color palettes uh, refactoring work last year. Uh, he seems excited by the idea, so he implemented it. Um, some really nice work. Well done, Mike. Um, there is, let's see, am I forgetting anything? There is some other fixes to do with uh, high DPI cursor support on Mac, Mac OS. 
Uh, I think that's Rene and uh, Raphael who were involved in that. And um, otherwise, it looks to be particularly quiet. Oh, uh, Mykov uh, also uh, finished his clip-to-page work. I mentioned it a few weeks ago. That's now merged in. Um, it's basically, it replaces the uh, top right-hand corner. There's like tiny little buttons in Inkscape that most people miss it, that are on the scroll bars. Uh, it replaces the button there so that instead of just doing one-to-one, -one, it now opens up a little uh, pop-up men menu where you can control a bunch of different visual aspects. Uh, it looks really, really cool, including the clip-to-page that will hopefully hide anything that's not on a page. Um, I should also point out PBS is involved in um, improving Inkscape speed, but a lot of it is back-end work that will help in the future at some point. Okay. Uh, that's it for, for this week. Thank you very much for, for watching and indulging my uh, <laughs> predilection for doing a bit of acting. And uh, I'll see you all next week.